As you guys know, MSN is a great source of news, entertainment and science. I was perusing MSN and I couldn't believe two articles that were out of this world. The first one is taken from Science Alert and the title is Astronomers Confirm the Existence of Planets that Have the Lightness of Cotton Candy. Let me read that <laughs> headline again. <laughs> Astronomers confirm the existence of planets that have the lightness of cotton candy. And the article, uh, article is written by Michelle Starr. Good on you, girl. Oh, just look at that picture. Beautiful sun, beautiful planets looks so realistic mm, beautiful uh, look at the light is shining onto that planet oh my god anyway <coughs> let's read the article no two planets in the solar system are exactly alike but we can broadly categorize them Rocky worlds, Earth, Venus, Mercury and Mars, gas giants Saturn and Jupiter, ice giants Neptune and Uranus, and dwarf planets like Pluto and Ceres. That sounds pretty diverse, but astronomers have just made a detailed study of a fascinating type of planet we don't have. Super puff worlds. <laughs> Super puff worlds. <laughs> oh god, I'm going to like this article. Of all the exoplanets our efforts have uncovered to date, only a handful less than 15 have been puffy <laughs> oh these three young planets seen orbiting a star around 2600 light years away 2600 light years huh? I wonder how many parsecs that is mm. I don't know. I'm not very good at maths. Anyway, uh, seen orbiting a star around 2,600 light years away are almost the size of Jupiter, but have less than 1% of its mass. That means they have spectacularly low density. In fact, they're the puffiest planets <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> with a density lower than 0 0.1 grams per cubic centimeter. In press statements, the texture of these planets have been likened to corn candy. <laughs> oh Jesus. Let me read that again. <laughs> In press statements, the texture of these planets have been likened to corn candy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't be serious anymore. <laughs> this is an extreme example of so cool about exoplanets in general, said exoplanet scientist Zachary Berta Thompson of the University of Colorado Boulder. They like to be called UC Boulder. Okay, no problem. They give us an opportunity to study worlds that are very different than ours. But they also place the planets in our own solar system 
into a larger context. I see. The three planets orbiting a star called Kepler-51 were discovered in 2012, but it wasn't until 2014 that the strangely low density was discovered. Okay, so so it took two years to to dis discover that strangely low density. No problem. Now, using observations taken with the Hubble Space Telescope, a team of astronomers has revealed what is happening with the planet's atmospheres. The Kepler Space Telescope located exoplanets using the transit method, that is, the dimming of the light of a star when a planet passes between the telescope and the star in what is known as a transit. We call it twinkling of a star. The atmosphere makes the stars twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. The other, uh, the other awesome thing about transiting exoplanets is that when they dim the star's light, some of it gets filtered through the exoplanet's atmosphere, if it has one. So you can look at a spectrum of electromagnetic wavelengths from the star when the planet both is and isn't transiting. Because certain molecules block certain wavelengths, these absorption lines on the spectrum can be read to infer the chemical composition of the atmosphere. And there we have the an artist's rendition of Kepler-51 planets compared to solar system. Oh, look how beautiful the colors are. I particularly like the, uh, the pink one on the right, Kepler-51d. What a beautiful planet. Very nice indeed. Congratulations to the uh, to, to the uh, artist. Bravo, my man, bravo. This is what the researchers did to analyze the atmospheres of Kepler 51b and 51d. But when they got the results back, the atmospheres were concealed by an opaque layer at high altitude. Mm, and how the fuck would you know that? Is it 2,600 light years away? Okay. It definitely sends us scrambling to come up with what we, what could be going on here, said planetary scientist Jessica Libby Roberts of UC Boulder. We expected to find water, but we couldn't observe the signatures of any molecule. So they turned to computer simulations. Sorry? So they turned to computer simulations to see what sort of atmospheric conditions could produce something like the super, puffer, super puffs. Super puffies. Overall, very low density, but wrapped in an opaque shell. And the best fit turned out to be an atmosphere that was a mixture of hydrogen and helium with an altitude layer, layer of methane. Again, how the fuck would you know that? 2,600 light years away, you fucking morons. We've been, uh, we've seen something like that methane layer before in Saturn's moon Titan. Because of the thick methane layer surrounding Titan, we didn't get a direct image of moon surface until Cassini arrived in 2004. More bullshit. If you hit a methane with ultraviolet light, it will form a haze, Libby Roberts said. It's Titan in a nutshell. The team also discovered that these atmospheres are leaking off into space <laughs> at a tremendous rate. 
I have to read that again. The team also discovered that these atmospheres <laughs> are leaking off into space at a tremendous rate. Okay. That said, could explain why these super puff planets are so rare. Since these strange puffs are so young, <laughs> <laughs> the corn candy stage could be a temporary stage in their development and their final planet could be something much more expected mini Neptunes the most common type of planet in the galaxy and also not found in the solar system a good bit of their weirdness Berta Thompson said is coming from the fact that we are seeing them at a time in their development where we rarely got on the chance to observe planets. Oh, is that it? Okay, a stupid comment to finish with. Well, there you go, folks. Cotton candy planets. What will they think of next? Dun, dun, dun. Let's wait in bated breath